Good evening. I am going to do some plant chores for this video. It's kind of like some random repots slash propagating rehabbing. <laughs> I have a little list here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get to everything tonight um, in this little bit, probably for like the next hour, but I'm going to see what all I can do. So I brought my first little project in here and I'm drinking a nice little hot cup of coffee. It's gotten so chilly. It's been like, I think it's going to get down to low 30s tonight and tomorrow night. So it's starting to get a little bit darker. It's like four o'clock or so. Well, it's actually after four. So the sun will be going down fully here soon, but I bought some peppermint espresso pods and it's so good. I love the taste of peppermint. So that is to warm me up. What I have here in front of me, <laughs> uh, this is all that's left of my Hoya Shepardii. So you guys know I had moved all my Hoya that were in the dining area to my like primary bedroom for the winter. And it was doing okay before I did that, but I guess it didn't really like the lower light levels, um, but it started yellowing a lot. And a lot of the strands were like, turning all brown and crispy. These have been sitting out for like three days. Um, I feel really bad about that. Uh, they literally have been sitting in my bathroom in the dark for three days. Actually, maybe longer than three days. Um, I just cut all the strands that weren't woody and I'm gonna try and salvage what I can. And some of these strands may not even be good. Like this one's already like woody and torn here. Uh, so I am going to propagate my Hoya Shepardii all up. I'm really sad about that. This Hoya just got really unhappy after the whole mealybug situation. It actually bloomed for me the first time this summer. Um, it was so cute. I was like, that better not be a mealybug. I will scream. My Hoya Compacta still has mealies in my bedroom. I've been like spraying it every so often. Another plant that I have to rehab next um, was covered in mealies, so I will do that one after this. So I'm gonna salvage this into stratum. This container here is all wet used stratum. I was doing some unpotting earlier today uh, for some props that were in stratum. So this is all the leftover stratum. It's very wet, so I'm just gonna reuse it. <laughs> I don't sanitize it or anything, so it's no sense in wasting it. I like to reuse my stratums for props. Might as well. And this vessel is just like a plastic glass. I was using this to propagate some Monstera in, so I'm gonna use this to prop all the strands, and once I have enough roots, I will pot this plant back up. Hoya love stratum. They do in root so well. I just need to figure out what I can salvage because some of this is woody. So the strand, if a Hoya strand is woody, like when you go to cut it and no sap comes, then it's no good. So if you see the little sap, that means your strand is good and it's okay. I think I will keep this Hoya out of my plant room though, because it was just near plants that had Hoya or had mealies. So I'll probably end up putting it back um, in the bedroom. Oh, here's the little, here's the little inn that had the bloom come in this summer. It only had like four or five blooms come in on it. Hoya's root in multiple places along the vine. So you don't necessarily have to put them right where the actual node is. You can stick them, their stems down in the substrate and they should root. I actually might cut this one again. I don't want super long sections. Oh, shoot. So I'm gonna do like length sections, I think like this, and then pot the ends into a stratum. Kind of all the way around and then we'll fill up to the top. I was so sad when this one started yellowing. I really liked the Shepardi eye. Okay, we're gonna cut the two little wings off on this bottom node here. Because that doesn't have a long enough stem and we'll stick this one in. I 
I think since this one's a little sparse, I'm gonna cut here and do like one little section. Oh. I don't know if you can tell like the woodiness, like if you can literally like snap it and it's like completely dried, so nothing's gonna grow from there. So I'm gonna cut this bottom. This one is a trash piece here. I'm gonna stick this little piece in here. I think this one has enough, ooh, sap. <laughs> has enough little, little node here to root that section in. Might have to add that one in last. I'm considering trying some Hoya and Pawn. Some of you guys said that you, um, that Hoya loved Pawn. And I don't have any Hoya and Pawn yet, so I might try it out for some of these that are actually like rooting or that I have to reroot back. I might do this one when it's time to pot it up into Pawn. is gone. Okay, so I have my little basket like that. And then these ones have a short stem, so I'm gonna like pluck these in on top in the stratum. And then these are our woody pieces and beans that we had to cut off. So these I'm just gonna a uh, toss. Ugh. Fill with our strata. This is full to the top. <laughs> all right, that is covered on all sides. So we're gonna stick these two little pieces down in here. I actually should cut the bean. Let me cut this bean off. All right, here is hoping our little Shepardi eye grows back. Uh, if I have room out in my east window, I'll actually sit it in the window because I feel like it would appreciate the window light a little bit better. Um, I don't see like any active mealies or anything. So hoping they're gone from this one at least. And the water levels here, it's actually this uh, stratum is pretty moist. So I'm not going to re-moisten this or anything. I'll wait until it dries some, so. That is that little guy, that little cutie. He looks better, like more compact. So once these are ready to go, I may consider putting this one in a pond. So that's our first little project. So the next one is a rehab two. That one is not rooted. I basically did the same thing. It's my string of dolphins. 
it was growing in so well and it's, it was hanging in my window over here and I didn't realize it was covered in mealies. And I was wondering how I got mealies and I had it like quarantining in the dining room for a while when all my Hoya were over there that had mealies. So I'm thinking they probably just got onto it somehow or, or the dolphins was the main culprit for some of the mealy outbreak that I had because the dolphins was the newest one that I purchased from Lowe's and maybe it had mealies and I didn't catch it. So, but thank goodness none of my other plants had mealies over here. I just think they were confined to the dolphins. I haven't, and I actually have three Hoya in this window, actually five, six, seven, seven Hoya in this window over here and I haven't seen a mealy on anything else. So thank goodness. So I'm gonna like pot up my dolphins into soil and it'll root in soil. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go put this guy somewhere and I'll grab the dolphins and I'll be right back. To be honest, this is all the dolphins that I saved. I don't know how these are gonna do. I did this over the weekend. No, I did this a while ago. I left these soaking in neem oil castile soap and alcohol for like five hours. It was only supposed to be for 30 minutes, but I got busy doing something else and I forgot they were soaking. So these do not look very happy. They're very limp and uh, yeah. This plant was covered in mealies, you guys. They were crawling literally everywhere. It was so disgusting. I had never seen mealies like crawl so fast before. So some of these may just be like rotted strands. Um, they're very, very limp. <laughs> I'm not sure what's really salvageable, but what I'm gonna do is pot the ends into uh, soil and just see what happens. It's the same thing that I did with my pearls. So I'm just gonna do like ends like that long and pluck them down into soil and just see, see what they do. I think I may just have to buy another dolphins when I come across it. Let's make sure it doesn't have mealies. I'm trying to see like which way is the end and which way is the top. I'm just kind of removing the dolphins from like the bottom couple of inches so that we can stick this in the soil. I'm just hoping they root. I would have tried to save more strands, but this it was covered in mealies. I don't know if I took, I think I did take some footage with my phone. So I will like play that footage cause they were just like, they were going in. I'm glad I'm taking care of these though. I've been like, putting it off all week. I'm like, I really need to get my dolphins potted up. They're so like sticky, <laughs> gooey. Okay, I think that's it. This is all kind of like mushy strands. I'm not left with anything. <laughs> 
I had to like toss the rest. I just, I was spraying it down. I think I sprayed it down a total of like three separate times in a span of a couple weeks. And the last time I saw a ton of mealy still crawling all over it. So I just like, I'm like, I'm just gonna cut strands, soak it, and then that's it. I figured that was like the best way to get rid of the mealies. I mean, they were like, there were some small baby mealies. There were big ones. There were like fast moving ones. So all I'm doing is kind of bunching up what's left here that I had cut all the dolphins off where all like the nodes are. And I'm just going to make a little hole here in the, in the soil and just stick these strands together in this little hole. And we're gonna fill up to the top. This is my cocoa core mixture. Gonna kind of wrap the dolphins up top here. This one would appreciate being in my south window, but I'm a little worried leaving this dolphins in here. But I don't want to put it in the bedroom. Maybe I'll put this one in my east window. Although it really, really would appreciate the bright sun in here. I don't think it would have any more mealies, but again, I just don't take that chance. So kind of something like that, it's just kind of whatever survives, survives. Ugh. I think if this has any chance though, it's gonna to need to go back in the south window. It's gonna need like some direct sun on it for sure. I could actually put the hanging pot back up, hang it back and stick this little pot in the hanging basket and then just keep an eye on it. might do that. Kind of let that drain. That one is done. Um, there is another Hoya that I've been like dying to repot. It's getting so long. I have, <laughs> I have it on this trellis and I'm actually thinking about just putting it in my window and letting it be like a trailing Hoya because it's already wanting to trail. I like it in that spot, but I figured I could put something else maybe in that spot. I'm like, I don't really have room for this one in my window unless I move the dolphins. Uh, to that spot, which I could. But it's been, it hasn't been repotted in I don't know how long. Let me show you that one because I could quickly like repot that one and take it off the trellis. I had it on my list here. Look at how long overdue this Hoya is for a repot. This is my Hoya Curtisii. Like, you, it's like, what is this trellis situation? This is like, this is long overdue. Uh, but I think it would look cute trailing. I thought about maybe like propagating some strands because this, <laughs> it has clearly outgrown this trellis. I don't even know how to begin to take this out of here. Oh my goodness. I 
I feel like this Hoya thrives on neglect because I feel like I rarely pay attention to this Hoya. Clearly I've neglected it. Um, Cause it's just been on this trellis. It hasn't bloomed for me yet. I've had this Hoya for a, a long time. I, ha I remember this Hoya at the old house. At one point I thought I was getting peduncles. Yeah, there's peduncles here, but I don't think they ever did anything. But I feel like my like Hoya Shepardii, the one that I did first, that one had peduncles for the longest time and then they finally started like pushing out. Wow, this is so tangled. Not as bad as a string of hearts though. String of hearts is a lot. Untangling that is a lot. <laughs> oh, this is so tangled. What the heck? I don't even know how to begin. Like, I don't even know where these strands end and begin. I think what's happened is like some strands have produced offshoots, you know? So like there's multiple strands now. I managed to get it all untangled. I don't know how. Look how long it is. Holy moly. <laughs> I did not realize it was so long. I feel like it needs a trim, like maybe like right here. That way I can start from like a fresh trim. You know what I mean? And it's actually, it's really only one stump because I think I got this as like one I don't know if I got this as a cutting or what, and it's grown like ever since. But do you see, it's literally just like one little stem in here, like that's it. And it's done all these offshoots by itself. But yeah, well, uh, honestly, I really don't know if it needs to be repotted then since it's, oh no. This is that soil. I forgot I might had some Hoya in this mix. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna repot that. I'll probably just refresh in the soil and keep it in the same size pot then. So that's where I had it, right up here on that trellis. I really don't want it over here because it's kind of going to get in the way of my Monsteras because I have moved my hearts. Um, oh gosh, I was knocked into the light. I have moved my hearts over here and it's growing really long. So I was trying to avoid putting something that was long here. So I think I will put it back here, maybe let it trail down this side here. All right, I think I will, yeah, I think I will give it a trim. So I have a clean pot that I'm gonna use and I didn't actually lose too many shells. <laughs> um, I thought I was gonna lose more. I have a little bucket here, so I can't believe this 
Sequoia has still been in this mix. This is crazy. We're definitely going to get rid of this mix for sure. It's literally like one vine in here. actually had a pretty good root system. I'm not going to worry about getting every little piece off. Like, look at that. Uh, one little stem. It's been in here for a year and a half, I think, at least. Yeah, sometime early last spring. It honestly didn't even need to be repotted. I just didn't want, I didn't realize it was in that mix still. I think it could use a soil refresh though. And I'm not gonna water this because the soil is pretty wet and I don't wanna overwater this Hoya, so. I'll give it like maybe a week and then water. Probably this coming weekend when I water my plants. I take that back. I'm just gonna do a little water, just a little, cause this uh, soil is super fluffy and it needs a little weight, a little weight with the cocoa core or this plant might come flying out of here. I just gave it a little sip. I'll just keep it in the same pot. I feel like adding some cuttings like in here, this is definitely too heavy. It's like tilting up. So I think uh, adding some cuttings in here to fill this plant out will be good in some time. So I have two vines that are kind of shorter here. So I'm gonna cut like underneath where the two shorter vines are, that way they're the same length. So I'll basically be cutting like all of this off. One, two, and three. Oh, I missed one. Oh, look at the haircut. <laughs> that looks better. It looks like, you know, when you go get a haircut and you give yourself a nice little trim and it feels so even throughout, I feel like that's what this Hoya is gonna feel like. I wanna try and spread it around a little too so it's not so heavy. I feel like it's just so weighted in the front. Do we like it like this? I missed the trellis already. Like what if I just keep these in the same direction? That way they won't get tangled. 
you know. An hour later, I have the exact same plant in the exact same position. I just trimmed it and somewhat untangled it. Does this look stupid? I feel like it's too heavy to let it uh, trail in the front with just that one little piece. You guys will have to let me know what you think. I'm gonna leave it like this for now. I mean, I did repot it and why is it crooked? Now, let me just uh, figure out what to do with these strands so I can prop them. That's the growing end, so I need the cut end that I cut off. Same thing, I'm gonna remove the bottom few leaves on these strands and I'll stick these in stratum. And then I'll just add them in the pot, like back here somewhere to kind of support the weight, you know, once they grow a bit more. I'm gonna use more of this used stratum. Uh-oh, shoot. Stick all these down like right in the center. And fill up. Perfecto. We literally have a whole second plant. So I'm gonna sit, set this back in the spot and then I'll just sit this next to it. It looks better. It looks better than what it did. It's more, it's more tamed, I would say. And then we'll add these back in here when it's time. <laughs> that took a lot longer than I thought and I made a heck of a mess. So let's just do one more since this is, uh, this one took me a little longer. Um, do I want to add a couple allocation to pond or extend my golden pothos behind me? I really need to extend it. Er, I don't know if I feel like messing with that right now. I might do like one allocation in pond. Okay, I'm back. I think the last thing I'm gonna tackle for today's little random plant chores is these two cute little alocasia. So I'm not gonna put these in like a self-watering planter just because they're so small. Um, so I'm gonna use like little clear containers. They have drainage. And I'll just sit these on a, like a little saucer or I'll find something to, I wish I had like little ones with wicks, that would be nice. I need to find some like smaller self-watering pots, but I'll at least set these in something so the pond can stay somewhat moist. And then once they establish in here, I'll pop them up bigger. But these are the two alocasia that I got from uh, Green, no, Green Escape, yes. And they were in soil. I got them as little plugs and um, they didn't do that well in soil. So I've been having them in water for over a week now, I'm just kind of like, all the soil roots are kind of rotting off. So I'm gonna stick these little stumps into a thing of pond. This one is like a variegated alocasia. It's, I think a variegated alocasia California or something like that. I don't know the exact name. Um, and I have like another little baby corm here too. 
pluck these down down into pond. They have a little bit of water roots forming. And this other one is a Mickey Mouse one. And it does have some water roots growing in. But anything that's rotting that was from soil, I'm just kind of uh, using my finger and like getting off. Baby plants are so stinking cute. I seriously love baby plants so much. And they're just so cute and petite. <laughs> it's so tiny. Uh, this one I think had some sort of weird fungal issue and I don't know whatever happened with it, but this leaf is a little weird. I know these ones are really prone to spider mites too. So, I might have to open a new bag of pawn. I figured we would just pluck these right down in here. This is so stinking cute. Oh my goodness, like, come on. <laughs> How cute is that? Freaking adorable. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I love the way pond looks. I love that it looks like that. And I don't have to worry about freaking fungus gnats or anything. This makes me want to put all my plants into pond. I'm not going to, but it's very tempting to want to do just strictly pawn. I wish I knew about pawn when I first got into plants. Obviously, I didn't even know like growing in like uh, semi-hydroponics and stuff was even a thing. I just like plant soil, you know? I mean, come on. Look how stinking cute these are. We're just gonna do a little bit of water just because um oh that'd be nice if i could sit these both in here i don't think they would both fit <gasps> maybe they will They don't really fit that well together. Let's do these little white ones instead. I think they'll fit them better. So we'll do a little bit of water in here so that it can wick up. And I'll probably find some like little self-watering planters to do these in instead, but I think this will work for now. 
So I'll just have these on my plant shelf and a little tray of water while they kind of establish. They're so cute. I love them. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to get some more to more of these, but it's getting kind of late and I need to start dinner. So I think that's all I'm going to do for now. I'll probably do another alocasia video soon. I need to unpop my alocasia capria and my regal shield, at least get them stuck in water. And then I'm going to pop my capria up together and then my regal shield. And then I need to get some bigger self-watering planters. So thank you so much for watching this little random repotting rehab sesh. <laughs> Uh, the Hoya definitely took a lot of time. It looks better, but I feel like I didn't do much with it, but I'm happy with it. Um, yeah, I'm happy with what I got accomplished today. So yeah, stay tuned. I'll do some more like random stuff like this. And I have like a lot of moth pole maintenance to do. I need to do that soon. And I think take care of the rest of alocasias and then I feel like I should be kind of hopefully settling into winter that I shouldn't have to do too much with my plants. Um, I just have a lot of moss pole maintenance to do for sure. So thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna put these back on my shelf over here and clean up this little mess. And yeah, I will chat with you guys here soon. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.